All right, YouTube, we're here with the 1.5 meter air tractor. Look at the awesome landing gear on this thing. Excited for the, these huge Fowler flaps. We're going to start out our flight with a 3200 milliamp 4S. You can see where we've marked it. As we've been doing in the past, we're going to go ahead and do this flight. We'll get this thing made and up. It's nice and calm. And then we're going to see how it does on 3S. If you stick around, you can watch the build series and the setup for the radio setup and everything. We'll do a little taxi here. Just kind of see how it looks. Taxi's quick. Looks beautiful. Full landing flaps coming down. Of course, we'll give you a shot of that real quick. Oh, yeah, those flaps look great. So here we are. Okay, we'll do a quick grass taxi so you can see kind of how it taxis on relatively short sod. I can already tell it's going to be one of those nights because the bugs are out. It turns on a dime, which is really helpful. I'm going to get some speed and then chop the throttle so I can bounce back onto the concrete. There's just a little bit of a lip there. And the sun has just fallen over the hill. So... Here we go, we'll take off going that direction. There's not really any wind to speak of. So why don't we actually, we'll just take off right here. Take off flaps deployed, here we go. Oh, she gets right off the ground, out of the flaps all together. Right over the tree line, got a little bit of, little bit of elevator trims needed. Oh, that thing looks so gorgeous. A little bit more elevator trim. There we go. A little bit of aileron trim. Okay, throttle set. There we go. Got it trimmed out, I think. About 30% throttle there. Oh, that thing looks good up in the sky. Okay, here we go. We'll do a full speed pass. This is on 4S. Man, that thing just does it right now, whatever you want. Looks cool. Looks very cool. Man, tons of elevator or tons of rudder authority. Full landing flaps here. We'll see if we can get a slow pass. Feeling a little bit wonky on the elevator right now. I think I want to increase my expo on the elevator access man it's faster than i thought we're going to try a little bit of rudder excuse me elevator trim man that thing is very capable I'm gonna go up to my middle setting for Expo. I think that might have been part of my problem. I was in my highest setting. Or I mean, my lowest setting of Expo, my highest setting of control. I can tell we've got some new breed of mosquitoes out here because they're going right for my elbows the whole time I've been doing this. Same thing with the camera crew. They're horrible. which is really frustrating when you're trying to fly, guys. It's got nothing to do with the plane, but man, it's got everything to do with mosquitoes. Full landing flaps here. Boy, a lot of nose down, I don't like that. It looks so cool though. 40 seconds left on the time. Too much down elevator correction right now. Gorgeous view with the sunset. Take off flaps here, out of the landing flaps, of course. Full landing flaps here. Yeah, I just, I don't like the way it feels with the elevator correction. There's too much of it. I need more elevator. So we're gonna definitely change that. There's our warning, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a landing. 
Okay, full landing flaps here. We're gonna adjust that as soon as we get it down. I don't like being starved for elevator, folks. Into the grass we go. Out of the throttle. Don't wanna hit that bump hard. Guys, I don't know if you can tell, but we've been swatting the whole time. These mosquitoes are just out right now because it's right at twilight. Okay, elevator correction. Mixing, whoops. Flap system. Six is going down to three. 10 is going down to five. Okay, and you can see I got a 66% adjustment on elevator. That's a big adjustment, folks. That's a big adjustment. Throttle cut is on and tested from the middle CG point. We're even showing a little bit tail heavy on the markings. So we're gonna try, we're gonna try testing this pack. We're gonna try testing this pack here real quick and just see what we got for voltage left. Man, it's bad when the bugs are eating you up early in the season like this. They're so aggressive at twilight. And it's just a really good way to lose a plane because you'll be sitting there swatting at them and you'll crash your plane. It has happened to me before. I'm sure it's happened to you guys before too. Okay, plugged in. We're at 64%. We got plenty of time to go. So we're going to go ahead and fly just a little bit longer. Could have looked at the telemetry, but the telemetry does not tell me the first cell voltage that I know of. If it does, somebody please leave it in the comments below because I would like to learn how to do that. Um, the other thing is, it was registering as slightly tail heavy. I'm at my mark right here. You guys can see the mark, okay? I'm gonna bring it back kind of kind of a lot. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go like this, right? I'm just gonna go back like a full half inch, okay? This canopy goes on backward from virtually every canopy that we've ever had. Mm -hmm. So every time I go to do it, it, it's like I can't quite connect the dots. I don't know why that is. On my left, please. No, it's not. Like usual. Throttle cuts off. Just looking at my trims. It's just, it's just, I feel like it flies rock solid, but we're just right there on the edge of having the trims perfect. We're gonna take off on the runway toward the, toward the flag there, hon. Okay. What a beautiful looking plane though. Mm -hmm. Really gorgeous. It's cool. Get that tail wheel up, take off flat. She jumps right up in the air. Yeah. Looks really good. We're gonna go to the highest expo mode here. Take off flaps back in. Coming in for a shot. Fertilizer there. Just unlimited vertical on 4S, no question. I'm still on the flaps, which is a little bit weird into the landing flaps oh yeah way better now guys i still have plenty of elevator authority now but i don't have any ballooning whatsoever i don't know why they had us putting it so high that was like way too much elevator correction look at the hay guys that's pretty cool oh yeah this thing is capable i love the way it's flying I almost never do turns that way when I do my stall turns. I don't know why that is. Man, this high setting of Expo, meaning the most Expo, is very satisfying flight. The, so that means that the low rates would be a pretty good satisfying flight too. Of course, they'd be a little bit low on the throws, guys. You'd be hitting the ground on the way down. Really high roll rate there. Okay, we'll show you again on the, here's on the aggressive expo mode. She turns on a dime. Man, these skeeters are bad, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They're really bothering us both. They're really bad if they're bothering me so much. Let's see if we can get it to spin over. You do have to give this thing a little bit of juice. She'll glide nicely, but uh, 
on the way downhill, she's carrying just enough weight that you got to be a little bit aggressive on the elevator when you pull out of your dives, which is not, not a problem. Let's do the local route there. Come back around. Swarm of them. Come down here, huh? Okay, we had 64%. No, all the way over where it was. Got reasons for where I want you. Try to draw this out. Look at that beautiful sight. That green backdrop just makes it hot. I love the way it's looking, love the way it's flying. Hate the mosquitoes. We're going to try to shoot a landing right from that, right from that circuit. <coughs> Can't hit on that crappy landing. You know what might actually help this plane too is just a little teeny bit of coordination on the rudder with the ailerons. Nice flat response with the throttle. It doesn't like the. It, it, you feel like it's going to want to pick up a lot of pitch with the throttle, but it just doesn't. The tail is somewhat behaved when you get on the ground with it. Okay, let's try grass take off for the people. Take off flaps, full back elevator. Oh yeah, absolutely no problems. We'll try grass landing. Here's your landing flaps here. Get into the power a little bit. We'll just try grass landing now, right next to the runway. Touch and go, sorry. Thing is just really well behaved. I think I want to take down my elevator correction just a hair even. Oh no, I picked up a bunch of stragglers. Mm. You see it? Yeah. Guys, forgive us. The worst part of this flight has been the mosquitoes. And that does have an impact on the way the plane shows, I gotta be honest. Need just a little bit more elevator there, guys. The uh, Right now I've got 66% trim, 70% trim on there. So I'm losing my, th I'm losing my throw. All right, so we got eight minutes, 20 seconds on the flight time, but that includes some screwing around when we measured the voltages. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna adjust the trim get out of the mosquitoes, give them just a minute, and then we're gonna try again with the three S. Okay, so we'll pause it. All right, so we've got the air tractor here. We're gonna do the mechanical trim on the elevator. So as you can see, it's at minus 70, minus 70, which is pretty bad. Here, we'll wake up the screen, minus 70. So that's a lot of trim adjustment. Make sure you're not in safe when you attempt to do this. So what I'm looking at is just, just look at the, look at the wing with us. I've got it upside down real carefully, laid it down. You'll notice you've got a carbon fiber spar that helps support the, the weight of the plane when you lay it down. Some of these planes, um, this part actually goes out to the front and you need to be really careful to put them upside down like that because you'll actually break the wing. So on this one, it's nice and sturdy. Uh, the landing gear did really good. There's maybe just a little teeny bit of an adjustment that, that might be handy on this to try to get that tail dragger to work well. Um, the thing that's cool about the two springs, and I didn't think about this when we were building it, is you could just stretch out the one side a little bit more than the other. And then if you ever overstretch it, all you have to do is take out a lighter and put a little bit of heat to it, but keep it away from the foam, and that will pull that spring back so it'll actually pull it back a little bit. So at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna make this this differential go.
Okay, so we're gonna make that go away right there. Okay, so the way you make that go away is you first of all figure out about where it looks like it needs to be. And then you basically untrim it, which gives you your mechanical throw back. Because right now with minus 70 trim, that means I have virtually no up elevator, okay? The other thing I wanna do is before I forget is the flap system. I, I just think there's too much there. I mean, if anything, there's one and three, you know, they had us at uh, six and 10. I just felt like there's too much, too much elevator correction. Now that might be a function of just the way we have this plane configured. The other thing is uh, you can look at my expo um, setup. It looks like what I did was uh, seven, 15 and then 25 and 90. So I'm actually going to go ahead and run the ailerons up to 20 for the net for the main mode which is my middle mode and then on my aggressive one i'm going to do 10 because you can still get it you just got to move the stick further and then on my kind of like strolling around just being relaxed flight i'm actually going to kick that down a little bit that should make it really relaxing to fly we'll kick that up to 25 we'll kick this up to 20 and then we'll kick that. Actually, we'll do that at, we'll do that. Did I do 20? Yeah, I should probably do like 18 on this. And then on the lowest setting, we'll go up to like nine. So it'd be nine, then 18. Uh, let's just go, let's go 20 and then we'll do 10. Okay, then we're gonna do that also for the rudder. The rudder is going to be 5, 10, 20. Okay, so we're going to do like 10. This is what I say when you make your adjustments after the maiden. Because once you have experienced the way the plane responds, then you can go ahead and get in here and um, just relax the controls to where you like them. Or tighten them up if you need them to be more tight. Okay, so now minus 70 is in. So I'm just going to take note of where I need this elevator, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is actually pop this control thing off whatever you call this clip okay just so it's out of the way there's no sense in having that in the way while you're doing it this is like the easiest mechanical trim you can do because everything is right here you don't even have to turn a clevis which is kind of nice so you see we're in the bottom hole there okay so we're in the bottom hole we need to make up this much that's where we need it to be okay so we've got to, oh shoot, that's right. The mechanical trim is inside, isn't it? Dang it. I was just thinking that would be super easy, except it's not because you have to adjust it from the servo. So we're going to look at that now. Sorry guys, I got all excited and neglected the reality of the situation. Okay, so the way you adjust the mechanical trim on this style a plane, and then I'm just double checking for asymmetry on the flaps. It looks like my flap on this side might be just a, just a hair down, and I'm looking for my ailerons because I remember when I was putting this plane together, there was a little bit of an asymmetry in the ailerons at neutral at zero, but we got a little bit of trim in there, so we're going to see if that needs to be corrected. I don't think it's gonna need, to, remember, you don't correct your trim to square after you've flown it, you know where it needs it. So, this is how you do your mechanical trim on this plane. It's actually pretty easy still. You can use a Phillips screwdriver, one of the Chinese ones, or a number two. I think in this case, I'm gonna go for a Chinese one. I need to stand there. Go over here. Okay, so elevator, identify which one's the elevator. Obviously, this is the elevator here, okay? So we already know what it looks like at net minus 70. So you can kind of pay attention to where it is at minus 70. And then you can replicate that. Okay, so I'm going to unscrew this just to loosen it. Okay. And you can actually hold that control surface steady. Like you can physically hold it where it's supposed to be. You guys see how I'm holding this? I'm pinching it. And then I just run the trim right back to zero. Okay, 
Now it's at zero. This is like by far the, the easiest way to trim or adjust mechanically. Okay, it is a little bit hard to get that much pressure. So now that I have that held, this should hold it good enough. I mean, there might be a couple of clicks of trim that we have to kick back in there, but that's not a big deal. Now you're also gonna notice that on the elevator, we're on that hole, the inside hole there. And then on the rudder, we're on the very far outside hole. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of leverage on the output. You're gonna get a lot of precision on the elevator. That's why it's in like that. Um, all right, so the other thing we gotta do while we're in here is we gotta go ahead and double check what the voltage was on the pack. I believe we probably drew it down pretty good because we had 64% left at our timer. And we did land pretty much on time, didn't we? Yeah, almost, yeah. At the four minute, uh, four minute timer. Yep. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and plug this in real quick. I'm sort of getting used to this, but I always seem to plug it in upside down. Okay, so we had 25% yeah. power left. That's pretty decent mm -hmm. power. Decent cell voltage. So that's a, that's a good spot to leave it. So we can let that, we can let that sit. We're gonna fly it on 3S right now. All right guys, so I'm gonna use this marker. We moved that whole thing back here for the 4S. We moved it back to about here, okay? So I'm just gonna say 4S, okay? Oh, I made my S backward, dang it. I can wipe that off later. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so 4S, that's gonna be my new location. And what I'll do is I'll just double confirm that and then I'll just take a little gray clean and put it on like a tissue and then I can wipe off the old markings. It'll take it. It'll take it right off. So we're going to fly on 3S 3200. Uh, this is a smart pack, just like the other one. The only difference is of course the 3S versus the 4S. Now the good thing is I know I want to fly this thing back quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to fly it back where I had my first 4S mark. Would you look please? Right at the 4S mark. Okay. See where I got that? So we're gonna go ahead and strap this thing in. So we've got both straps holding now. <clears throat> I am not a fan of this style. They work until you rip them and you're gonna rip them on about the third or fourth flight. So Horizon, you gotta do something about that. That's not acceptable on a plane of this caliber. This is a very nice plane. I don't wanna be thinking about straps when I'm doing it. Okay, I might need to put a little Velcro on these packs too. Because mm. that would help hold it in place. That'd make a pretty big improvement. Mm -hmm. But going between 3 and 4S is always a little bit annoying because the thickness of the pack is just enough that you always got to redo the straps every time. So that being said, if you find out this thing flies better on 4S, you may never put a 3S in it again. In my experience, the 4S flew really nice. Does it need the power? I kind of doubt it, actually. So we're going to see just how good it flies. Um, I'm going to check the CG2 for you. go okay so everything is established there I didn't do a safe flight either so I gotta try to do that but we were doing a lot of trimming and stuff this time on this flight I really like the way this plane looks but there is one complaint on looks and I want to show you guys this I'm just gonna take the camera from the camera crew so guys this is one thing I I didn't like I was really kind of disappointed I love the way the plane flies, but I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell from here. There's a droop on the wing, and there's a, it's basically from a little bit of a bend in this piece of foam, okay? I have the same exact problem with my Twin Otter, and it's minor, and I think it has to do with just the shape and thickness, because not very much wing there, um, and it's, just, it's actually a pretty long wing. So... I understand better why they've got these brackets here. That's a scale detail. But I just think if there was a way to make them straight and flat, it would be much appreciated. Because there's a lot of carbon fiber rod in there. So I don't really understand why they're letting them come out with a bend in it. So not real excited about that. But I do really like the looks of this plane. Now you're going to notice too, I'm in the middle of my CG marks and it's testing very tell heavy. So I'm gonna try to find my back holes. And it's just, 
I'm saying go to the back of the range that they recommend right away. Just start at the back of the range. So this thing is probably about right. Um, we're gonna go out there. I'm actually gonna we're gonna pause it and we'll be flying 3S for right now. All right, guys. 3S 3200 30C Smart Pack CG has been uh, reevaluated a little bit. We're gonna fly this one way back here. You see where my red mark is for the 4S. Okay. If you haven't seen the 4S flight yet. You'll be seeing it now, or you'll be seeing it second. So there's your flaps. We're gonna go ahead and get taxied out. We have all the mechanical trim on the elevator. The mosquitoes were crazy on our 4S flight, which is unfortunate because this plane is a really good plane, but we were whacking our elbows and legs and stuff the whole time. Okay, here goes nothing. Very well behaved, gets off the ground without even thinking. Oh, it feels so light on its feet right now. I have to do a little bit of trimming on the rudder. Oh, it looks gorgeous. The lights are really easy mm -hmm. to see. Doesn't feel like it'd stall if you tried. Of course, we know that's not true. Full landing flaps here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Man, the 3S, it's a whole lot more tame. There's takeoff flaps. Just for some safety margins. Hey, right down the runway, hon, you good? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we played with our Expo after the 4S flight. And it's feeling really nice now, guys. Really controllable, really easy to fly. Very maneuverable like it would be in real life. Still have a little bit of a nose down pitch moment there when we get into the flaps. I'm not real thrilled with that, but we did a mechanical trim. We might just need to take out the correction altogether, okay. guys. Hard, hard tires like to bounce, guys. I I hate to break it to you. If you're doing this on grass, you're never going to experience that quite as bad as on a pavement runway. This plane is made for grass, guys. Just to show you, this on 3S too. The 4S, it's got a lot more pizzazz, guys. It's very fun to fly on 4S. I would suggest if you're buying this plane, go ahead and get it with the 4S. Move your left three steps, please. That's your right. Full throttle out of the flap. Not unlimited, but close. There's where you kind of stall out, okay? High speed pass coming. Carry a little bit of momentum, you'll be good. If you're flying high speed passes, you want to go up to your high expo setting or your most deadened stick setting because she'll be a little bit of a handful on full throttle. Boy, she looks good. Those lights are effective. Very easy to see. The yellow makes it pop like crazy. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. How are you doing with the mosquitoes there? Uh, terrible. I know, me too. They're screwing up the focus. See what I'm talking about, guys? Should have been a greasy, should have been a greasy landing there, but those wheels are hard. Okay, here we go. Flipping it in with the rudder. Okay, we're 
to try to relax it into a landing here. That down elevator correction needs to be gone. I'm going to come from the other direction. Okay. We'll see if we can just go out to the tree line there and come back. Yeah, the mosquitoes are landing on my hand as I'm flying. Mm -hmm. Very, very bad way to fly. Okay, we're gonna do a grass landing. Goodness gracious, they are just thick tonight. Mm -hmm. I can't hardly concentrate. There's your grass landing, guys. Okay, taxiing off the runway. This is usually the way I fly when it's really thick like this is I just walk around. The camera crew doesn't have that same luxury. You want to do our enclosing inside? Yep. Okay, That'd be great. okay, guys, final thoughts on this plane. Awesome plane, rock solid, does everything you expect it should. Um, like I said, a couple of different little minor, very minor cosmetic issues. The tail, I don't like that it's got that that bend in it i think that's probably just a manufacturing flaw on mine so if you guys get it my guess is you probably won't experience it and it appears to be just my left wing so to be perfectly honest if i called up horizon they would just send me another wing i'm sure they would um but other than that it's beautiful the wheels are hard if you guys can get yourself a pneumatic rubber tire this thing has ample power um if you're gonna fly it on hard pavement these things are just too hard, okay? You're never gonna be as greasy as you wanna be on the landings because you're gonna have absolutely no room for mistakes. Uh, that being said, if the mosquitoes weren't eating us alive, which they were totally mm -hmm. eating us alive, then I feel like we could have given this even better crack. Um, beautiful plane, looks great in the sky. One thing I didn't talk about in our unbox build radio setup is that I did have to also balance the prop and yes, this is gonna annoy some of you. Some of you have told me that using tape is not an appropriate balancing method. Okay, <laughs> what, okay, I don't really care. So it's balanced and it's flying really good. I wanna warn you about that because mine was a little bit out of balance. Um, Three-bladed props are a little bit harder to balance in my experience than just a two-bladed prop. Uh, yes, you can put it on a, a balancer if you want, but I just took and balanced it the good old fashioned way. You want to go back one step, there you go. As you can see, it, it's fine, okay? It's very good now. Throttle cuts on and tested. I'm gonna stop the prop. So, in terms of trim, I ended up with zero trim on the elevator, which is good. Oh, let's adjust our, let's adjust our flap system. I don't even want any correction, guys. Like, I just, I just want it. I just want it to be none. I can't believe I'm saying that. I almost always have elevator correction. But to be perfectly honest with you, I just, it doesn't need it in my experience. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure if it's just something, some nuance of the way I've set it up. And uh, we're gonna play these in order of the way that we captured them. So you're watching it the way we filmed it, uh, with the exception, of course, the build is gonna come. The unbox build and radio setup will happen after the babies. Beautiful plane, definitely get one. I love the Fowler flaps, they're gorgeous. They're big, they're reasonably effective. I think on this plane, it would be, I think it would tolerate even a little bit more flap. So might be able to overdrive the servo a little bit, but just be careful on digital servos. I'm not sure if these are digital servos. Sometimes if you go up to the very top of the range, they'll do weird things on you. So be real careful with that, but you have plenty of mechanical space if you wanted to try to drive them down more. Um, other than that, I love the way it looks. I love the way it flies. It's very easy to hold. It's very easy to carry. Uh, the stall, when I was getting close to it, was very relaxed. You would just kind of be flying along and you got tons of warning before she wanted to stall. So again, good for first timers. To be honest, I didn't even put it in safe the whole flight. I feel kind of bad about that. Um, this plane, I don't see a lot of people doing it for a first plane, but at the same time, you know, it's a low wing. It does definitely fly relatively easy. 
Um, this would definitely be a lot better first plane than some other planes we re reviewed lately. Um, second or third for sure, no problem. You'll be able to do it. Um, in terms of safe, if you're on safe, this is what I like to tell people about safe too, because people ask me that a lot. Like, hey, you know, like I'm still, I'm flying my sport cub ass. What's my next plane? Well, here's the thing. This would, this would be a fine next plane, but you need to be flying out of safe most of the time. If you need safe for help on landings when it's a, you know, cross breezy day or something like that, no big deal. Uh, just keep in mind, you're going to need more room. You need, you need larger margins because you have less authority from which to control it. So you've got that limited pitch and bank angles, and that's going to complicate your ability to get it down in the same space. So again, most of you guys aren't flying in a bowl like I am. I have trees on three sides, and then of course we get the house, and we have power lines on the front. So it's, it's a very limiting place. Now our backyard is open on, I would say, one and a half or four sides, depending on where we're flying from. So when we get that set up, we may do some uh, footage from that area. And what we're going to do is we're probably going to capture another video in the sun uh, just to get away from the mosquitoes, guys. This is, I don't know if those are bugs on there. They might be bugs. It might be dirt, though. I don't want to misrepresent the facts. But it would not surprise me if we had bugs on this thing because they were thick, guys. And if you've ever flown and you have mosquitoes biting your hand as you're controlling it's very difficult to get the mosquitoes off of your hand i put a long coat on that helped if i would have thought about it i would have put gloves on because it would have stopped that impact because there is no i mean i've crashed planes because i've had them get on my elbow and just at the wrong time and you go to whack them and you make a mistake and you stall and you crash i've, I've lost planes doing that so i know you guys are dealing with this, especially in north america if you're overseas you're just on the opposite side of things but uh this thing would be good in the snow, it would be good in the cold, it would be good in beautiful conditions like we had tonight, minus the bugs, which is a, a travesty because we have horrible weather this week. We had a, mm -hmm. what was it, like a, a tropical storm that was going through, something like that. So we got a Crazy, quite a bit of windy, rain. rainy. The, the wind was so strong that like trees, I swear they were gonna break off, it was crazy. So, um, I mean, not a hurricane, but it was just the remnants of a tropical storm that went through. So very bad weather, and then we get this dead calm conditions. So I had hoped for even better, but this plane is good. It is definitely a keeper. It is definitely a good plane. If you like it in the least, and I must say, when I first got in the hobby, this is like more of a, a plane, I, I, it's grown on me. It's mm -hmm. the type of plane that when I was first started, I always said that thing's ugly, but now I think it's sweet. I think it's cool. I have this like wider appreciation for planes and I think it looks sweet. And the other thing that makes it look sweet is because I've seen so many of them crop dusting and uh, it is amazing the things they do with the crop dusters and they are big planes. So they're not like a small plane like you're thinking, they're big yeah. and they're carrying a lot of weight. So those pilots are crazy. So, and they actually incidentally die a lot doing it. So it's one of the more dangerous things in aviation that people do. So if you ever see somebody crop dusting, definitely yield it right away. I don't talk about safety from general aviation standpoint much, um, just because it's annoying to hear safety things like that. So I'm gonna annoy you some more. If you see somebody crop dusting, don't fly around them, even though you want to, and they probably think it's cool and they wanna see too, but um, you always, yield to manned aircraft. That's one of the few rules in the FAA rules that are really good. Everything else, like 400 feet, is so arbitrary. The weight limit's super arbitrary, totally stupid, but still, you gotta follow the rules if you wanna be legal. So, but just yield to the manned aircraft. Cause I mean, I'm talking like sitting in the bed, looking out the window, there's the biplane. Wave to the day. Flying at me <laughs> yeah. through the window. That was cool, by the way. But it's also a reminder that they can come out of nowhere but you'll hear them. <laughs> yeah. You will hear them from a long ways away because they're extremely loud. Um, any other thoughts? It's Cameron? very cool. Yeah, I think it's a good plane. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a great flying plane, a lot of very good behaviors. I was very surprised about my mechanical trim, showing the mechanical trim that we've got in there. That's a 0% elevator, guys. I didn't expect that. And you know what's so weird is you would, you would think with that adjustment that I have it way nose heavy. I don't, mm -hmm. I have it 
Show them again, guys. Mm -hmm. Here's my marks. There's three marks here. I put a little drop of hot glue on there. See the three marks? I'm measuring from this mark and I'm just barely level. Look where I am. Mm -hmm. that's, that's way back there, okay? So we've got it all the way down to where it's strapped in and then there's another half inch exposed on the 3S. On the 4S, uh, I think the 4S, we could probably write it about the same spot too. But that elevator correction surprised the heck out of me. Because typically you don't have that mechanical elevator correction. It could speak to maybe having a little bit of an issue with that elevator, I wonder. Mm -hmm. So either way, get one. Follow the link in the description below, guys. If you want, stick around, watch the unbox, watch the build, watch the radio setup. Um, I don't think there was anything too phenomenally strange about the radio setup, but we do the assignment for safe. We did run into a couple issues on that, just on the count, and it kind of gave us like the false positive response, but then it wasn't set up, and then we, we worked through that, so that's good. Uh, you may want to stick around for that. Beyond that, great plane, really stout landing gear. Look at this, guys. Really stout. By the way, if you have a rough landing on these things, you can bend them square. I mean, you literally just grab them and bend them. Uh, there's no foam on there to worry about, you know, popping off. Uh, the Cirrus SR22T comes to mind when I say that because it had a very uh, short landing, uh, landing gear setup. And there was a, I don't want to call it a wheel pant, but it was, it was like a fairing or something around them. And it, it's beautiful, but when you go to bend it, they want to, they want to pop off. So um, you can obviously glue them back on. But then this tail wheel, oh man, it works great. It's very cool looking, but it's very effective too. Because when you're dragging through grass and stuff like that, it has a chance to kind of bounce out of the way, which saves your rudder hinge. It saves the rudder. It saves all that mechanical mechanism back here. It's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't transfer all the wear and tear to it. You're transferring it into the frame of the plane, which is much easier on it. We did have an issue with the tail wheel not being in the directions, so yes. people will want to watch that yeah. to see how to put that on correctly. And I don't know if we just got like an old manual, maybe, mm -hmm. because we didn't have an, uh, an addendum for it. We did have an addendum over the whole positions for all of the servos and the control horns, but beyond that, the addendum did not speak mm -hmm. at all to it. We looked it up online and that it had a is... picture, and then we pretty much looked at the picture on the box and let's just give them a quick shot of the way it looks. I mean, I'm not saying that we have it perfect. If that's not right, guys, just let us know. Go ahead and send us a comment. I, I mean, I don't really think it matters. The way we set it up before we followed the instructions, I think would have been just as good. But I love the way it flies. It's very, very good flying. Definitely, if you even remotely like this plane, get it. It's good. And I think it's a pretty economical one, too. Uh, bang for the buck, 1.5 meter. Flies on a whole slew of batteries. You can even fly that on a 2200 milliamp, but I wouldn't. Um, I want more flight time. Four is not enough time. Um, and as you saw, we had 64% left on the 4S. And I wasn't like being super easy on it. Um, I suppose you could probably sque squeeze a 12 minute flight time out of this if you really, really pushed it and you were very, 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 very conservative on your throttle. Um, but for most of us, flying a plane like this, it's going to be a few tricks and things like that mixed in. So you're going to want to burn through the battery. And a couple high speed passes is always fun. So, and love the yellow. It looks great. And the visibility out there was not phenomenal on the second flight. So mm -hmm. I'll mind you, it was getting a little bit dark. So the LEDs were very effective. The front facing LEDs were effective. I thought maybe the prop might get in the way a little bit. It actually didn't seem to impact it at all. Only thing that could improve that would be of course a tail light, but they don't put tail lights on the planes typically. Um, and the orientation lights, the, the na navigation lights work very effective. Strobes very helpful um, and very scale looking. Probably not a big deal. Is there a red any crash beacon? No, nope. there's not an no, any crash beacon on the bottom of this one. Um, but you can see the LEDs from a lot of different angles, so I didn't feel like we had a big issue there because mm -hmm. they're not super sunk in, which is good. This looks like the same one that they've got on the Timber STS, the 1.5 one. So. All right, guys, a lot of talk, a lot of follow-up on this one, mostly because it's a great plane, and I don't want you to blame the mosquitoes. Um, don't blame the plane for the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes were really screwing with us tonight. So love the plane. Get it. Check the link in the description below. We'll link to this plane. We'll link to the 3200 4S. We'll link to the 3200 3S. And then we'll link to... 
I think we'll throw on the S2100 charger because that's a good one because you could charge both of them on the same charger. So if you're looking to buy kind of the whole kit and caboodle, I also have links to the transmitters below. This is the DX8T Gen 1. It sets up just the same as the DX9 and the DX8. DX8 will do 99.9% .9 of what you want to do if you're getting into the hobby. It is a bit of an investment. I would highly encourage you to make the investment as early as you can afford to do. You will be skipping a plane probably if you're working on a monthly budget like I was when I first got into this. So that is painful. You will never regret buying a good radio system. I'm telling you that now and you're going to think I'm full of it until you do it. I hated the swallow of the spending on this DX18. Best purchase I ever made in the hobby and I've bought oh thousands of items in the last five years. I mean thousands plus, the, more, well over thousands of items. Um, and that's not including the ones that were given to me for review and things like that. I'm talking about like money out of the bank, the Hobby King, to Rise of Hobby, to the Hobby Shop, to whatever. I mean, there's literally thousands. I have thousands of parts downstairs. Mm -hmm. So, which was always one of my beefs with the local Hobby Shop is I'd go in and they didn't have the stuff I need. Well, I got it here. So, um, which is what Esteban, my cameo, would always say too. <laughs> so I was just here with that. <laughs> Buy the good radio. Buy it sooner than later because you're going to have a better experience and you're going to do it anyway. Don't wait till you need the ninth channel. If you can afford the DX9, get the 9. Don't get the 8. If you can afford the 8, don't get the 80, get the 8. You will thank me. All right, that's enough. I'm off the soapbox. Guys, thanks for watching. Awesome playing. Good job, Verizon. Even with the minor issues I got, this is a great point. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We are cutting this thing open, and we're gonna open it right now. This is a weeknight special. You don't normally do unboxings on weeknights. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's like a tractor, an air tractor. Are you kidding me? We do live on a farm, by the way. It is a USDA recognized farm. So, no matter what you say, County, it's a farm. Whoa, look at that fancy air tractor, 1.5 liter. That is pretty fancy. Wow, cool, look at those huge flats. I'm excited to see this thing fly. It looks like it has some big old landing gear. This is a big plane too. 1.2 meters, got LEDs on it. What else do we have? What's it look like on this end? Oh, it's just got the answer next stuff. What else, what else do we have here? Oh, that's pretty cool. This one, of course, is the bind and fly. And it's 1.5. Did I say 1.5? You said 1.2. Why did I say that? I don't know. My brain was saying 1.5, but Sorry. my mouth was saying 1.2. It is 59 inches, also known as 1,498 millimeters, so it's not quite 1.5. So technically, it is closer to 1.5 than it is to 1.2. <laughs> so brain, you were wrong. All right, here we go. So we're going to slide this thing out. I don't know if it's going to slide out. I think it's got, it's it's like that other plane that we did. That has the time. cardboard on. It's like that, that one plane, plane we did that, that one time. time. Yeah. Camera crew. Since we've only done like a thousand. Did you get my hilarious thousand. joke? Okay, good. The reason I say it is because I'm just trying to make, see, it's like that one that we did the other time. Was that the knife? Timber no. X. What was Why that one? Why are the boxes always so sticky tight? I don't understand it. Watch out it's for my little light. Oh boy, oh boy, watch out, camera crew. Okay. I don't know what up is, so I'm just gonna do this. This is gonna be good, guys. I'm excited to see this plane fly. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny that it is probably illegal to spray chemicals from this thing. So if you're thinking of asking, just remember, if you ever see me do it, it's just water. It's not actually weed killer or fertilizer. That would be dangerous. Or mosquito repellent. There's a bag of stuff. It's got a landing gear. It's got a bind plug. It's got, wow, that landing gear is like made of metal. Look at that. That's crazy. See that? No. Oh, That's weird. crazy. It looks like it's steel. I might be aluminum. It's hard to tell. Um, okay, what do we got? We got a prop. We got a three-bladed prop. 
that's pretty sweet. Probably to help with prop strikes uh, if you're doing grass sorties. Very light, hollow, carbon fiber tube, strong. Got the landing gear here, got the mains. Oh yeah, look at that. That yellow is pretty. Those landing gear are nice. They got that little tread pattern on them, which is kind of cool. Not a big fan of the non-retracting, bouncy, kind of like on the timber landing gear. But these are rock hard, Horizon. Come on, guys. That'll be better for grass, I guess. But the thing is, who knows? Who knows where this thing's gonna fly? You never know. It's an air tractor. It could be anywhere. Oh, wow. Look at those. Those are Fowler flaps, baby. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, wow. Look at those things. See that separation? You know what that separation protects you against? Separation. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> so the flaps, as you know, change the shape of the wing, which is ironic because if you see it like this, then when you're going, when you deploy the wing, when you deploy the flaps, then the shape of the wing changes and so the pitch of the airplane changes. So that's an interesting side note that you guys probably already know if you're watching this channel. That is really cool, I like that. And then look at this beautiful setup. Mm -hmm. that, that should have been designed so much longer ago. I think it probably was, it was probably just a cost component and they didn't want to make the planes cost too much so they didn't do it. Just to annoy us, you know. That's probably what they did. It's for extra Whoa, fun. what is this? Oh, nothing, we'll get to it. You know, I, I should probably pick up that box before the cats decide to get in and then I throw it somewhere. Yeah, they're playing in the pantry. I always feel like it's a better value when you have to open up both sides of the box. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, there's the other wing. This is the other wing, honey. See? Oh, good. Look, it's the other wing. I do like this wing. It is very pretty. You know, mm -hmm. or, or orange and yellow, okay? There's not very many planes that are orange and yellow. But I love yellow in the sky. It pops against every backdrop. Oh, yes. Look at those. Those, those might, oh, wow. Look at that. Look at this. Look at those servos, gorgeous, gorgeous. I can't tell if they're digital. I can just tell their spectrum, that's all I can tell. I'm trying to see if we can get an idea of if there's a spark. Oh yes, yes you can. Look at that, look at that guys. Look at that, there is a spar in that. That is awesome, that means this thing is gonna be stout. The wings don't look like it'd be a 1.5 meter though. Look at this. No they don't. Because they stick it in the side of the fuse. Mm. But still, if you figure wow. on that's still a pretty decent wingspan. If I drop it to the ground, yeah, it's gonna, with the body in the middle, it's gonna be mm. big. I do like the straight wing design. I hope the flaps are effective. Okay. Really well designed packaging from Horizon as usual. Really nice manual. Look at this. It's a cool picture and everything. Mm -hmm. Remember the last one we did that I can't talk about yet? Can I? It was the one that's being released tomorrow at 10 a.m. Oh. I was super yeah. disappointed. The it picture was, was like super lame. They didn't even have it colored in. I was like, get the crayons out, Horizon. <laughs> so we got the manual there. There's some stickers in the back too, which is pretty cool. Okay, the tail comes in two pieces, it looks like. What? What is this? They have struts on this? Oh, that's for the... That is weird. There's struts on the horizontal Ooh. stabilizer. That's a very strange. I guess I haven't seen that a lot on planes, but there are a lot of planes that have that. I'm just talking about in the radio control environment. Typically, if you're gonna have wing struts, they're gonna be on the main wing, but this is a low wing plane. So really high quality. Look at this, we got carbon fiber here, like usual. This is just plastic. It looks like it's more of a decorative detail, just to add weight. Oh, look at that, that's cool. That's cool. So when you pull up elevator, this is just gonna go the opposite direction. I forget what they call that actually right now but it helps with the aerodynamics, which is kind of cool. Oh yes, look at this, this is so cool. cool. Uh-oh, it's another one of these packaging only, not for That's flight. so weird. So weird. When did that Rising, start? You're weirding us out here. Oh yes, oh, 
This is going to be gorgeous. Look at this. This thing is going to go together quick. I am loving the exhaust pipes on these planes lately. Oh, look at the pilot. Oh, he has a nose. He's not Pinocchio'd. Oh, Can you see? He has a yeah. nose. That is awesome. It does look like he's kind of falling into a hole, which is a little <laughs> bit weird. Is this the, what is this? Oh, that's his indicator. I think in real life that thing is a, uh, that thing would be up here and it's like an indicator for the amount of chemicals or something like that. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's cool looking. Oh. Big control surface on the back. It's got that same thing here. They got linkages here for floats. I don't know, do people fly these on floats? Really? I, what it I'm says? asking if they do, I don't know. Optional. I don't know. Or skis. Is that skis? What? Optional. Optional. Well, it's always optional. Don't get your hopes up, camera crew. Oh, you no. have enough airplanes, we can't be getting floats for all of them. Okay, so the canopy. Oh, this opens. I, I, there's like a spring loaded thing here, but I'm just not sure how this goes. I just hope it's not one of those where you like break it off. Because the. Oh, oh, there it goes. I just didn't quite. Here, show the people at home. See this? There's like this. Mine just didn't quite go all the way back. That was what I was having trouble with. See? Really nice, high quality. Look at that. It's huge. That's what she said. So, look, guys, we have a smart, we have the new AR637 T and A. Wow. Whoa. We got T and A on this plane. EC3, not a smart connector. But we do have we do have the smart receiver, which is pretty cool. Um, what is this for? This is AS3X only. Leave plugged in while initiating TX bind. Okay. Uh, looks like we got our light controller module. We've got the uh, chop the fingers off warning. So don't do that. Whoa! Look at this. Look at these tubes. That's for the antennae. That's kind of cool. I like where the servos are. They're super easy to get to. Looks like there's good support on both of the rods that go to the back, which is good. You always want to support your rod. I, okay, Horizon, I got a question for you. Why is this thing not square? Is it, were they? It's not square. Why, why isn't it square? Seems to me that if you have a yaw axis taking measurements as you move, it would need to be square. I don't know. I've had that happen on two planes of late. The Twin Otter was the second one. But I was flying in a strong crosswind, and so I thought it legitimately had a problem. I actually unglued it and glued it back down. Sorry. There's a cat attacking itself. So, all right. This, this unboxing is basically done. As par for the course, you probably be already seen this thing fly. And now we're just going to go into the assembly and radio setup, and then we will be done with the video. Unless there's like a really bad video of the flight, and then we'll put that at the end where hopefully nobody watches it. Okay, okay guys, so we're about ready to do this build, and we've got these cute little kittens that are getting to be bigger cats and they are meowing and doing all sorts of ridiculous things, totally disrespecting our video. And so I just wanted to let you see what they look like because this one's trying to jump off the counter, which he could, I'm sure he could probably do it. But uh, we wanted to show you that because they're really cute and it has <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with the video. I hate it when people on YouTube bring their animals into it, but this animal, these animals, they are part of the farm. They are farm cats. That's why when they're big enough, they're gonna go outside, right, camera crew? No. <laughs> that one's gonna go. <sighs> anyway, all right, we'll be back for the assembly. All right, guys, so we're gonna use the DX-18 like usual to fly this thing. And it's recommending in the manual 3200 or 3200 3S or 4S. So in this case, you'd go down to 2200, but I don't know, that's a, they're suggesting a four minute flight time, which makes me a little bit nervous about the 2200. That's like really short. Um, I wanna fly this thing more than four minutes probably, but a lot can happen in four minutes. So anyway, we're gonna use that. Those are smart packs, 30C, they should be good. 
Um, we're gonna dive right into the assembly and it should be relatively simple. We open up all the sacks and uh, kind of have things laid out. So we'll see how this goes. There's screw holes here. Okay. I'm gonna slide that down. It basically goes in without actually needing the screws in order to hold it in place, which is awesome. I love that. And one of the reasons I'm confused here, camera crew, is yeah. that there's five, six screws that are golden. Yeah. Is that what we're supposed to be pulling from? I think so, because the couple spots I saw or screws. Or there's two plasticky style with washers. Nope, I don't think that's it. And then there's also two springs and two screws. Springs and screws. I don't really understand that either. So I'm not sure what that is. I know this is obviously the tailwheel assembly. So that's pretty straightforward stuff. But I just don't know which bolts to use. Two included three millimeter by eight millimeter screws for the landing gear. Then we need the braces get screwed in with six two millimeter by eight millimeter self-tapping screws. Six? Six. Are there six in that There's one? six in this. Okay, so maybe that's it. Then but then else? there's two like this. Would that be what we need for the main? There's washers involved though. I know, and there's no washers. Usually Horizon's pretty good about in the picture. telling you what to use, but we're having a harder time with this one. Wing. There's four screws. Yep. Three, what's that for? Three by eight. But what's Again, that for? That's for the wing? For the wing. Three by eight? So this must be it because there's two and then two more. But you were saying they needed six for what? Um, the little struts on the horizontal stabilizer. They're already in. Oh, well then so maybe they already did those. So there's two screws remaining then that are going to go in here from the side. And they're suggesting that they're self-tapping. Now there's some small ones. Maybe that's See those little are. dinky ones? Mm -hmm. I bet those little dinky ones that are up at the top of the screen there, those are probably next to my thumb. I bet yeah. those are what go into there. So how many are in here? Six. Okay, then that's two for the gear and two for the wings. No, which are two both... for the gear and four for the wings. Four for the wings, yes. Okay, all right. That's what I meant. Horizon, if you're listening, which you may actually be listening, please listen. Label the bags or do a better job of indicating what screws yes. to use. I must say that it's an industry standard to have crappy labels on these things, but don't be part of that industry standard. People expect better even if they buy it from Chino Land. That's too big for that hole. I don't know, I'd squeeze it in just fine. That's all I got to say. It went in perfectly, guys. So, I mean, I didn't have any issues with that, so I think that's probably right. Now, the other thing is, if in doubt, you can actually see these ones are really good right now. See, this is what's gonna be mm -hmm. actually receiving yeah. the wing. Okay, so now we need to do the horizontal stabilizer, yes. right? Which, uh, those are not going to use this type of screw, right? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to put those on top of this bag so they don't disappear on a countertop. Um, what are we using on this one? Um, there's just retainer clips, but I think you need that little carbon fiber. Oh, yeah. Spar. We need this. There's a small spar that I didn't mention earlier. There's the big one and the small one. This one's not hollow. That was in the bag with the... Yep. And by the way, guys, carbon fiber spar here, okay? So that's sweet. That's spar for the course. <laughs> That was terrible. I haven't gotten a plane with two left horizontal stabilizers for a while, Verizon. No, Thank that's you. been yeah, good. It's been really nice. It's been super handy. Makes it easier to put these planes together when you get a left and a right. Um, okay, so get in there. Oh man, that is, that is, whoa, I had to ram that thing in there. Jeez. Goodness, be gentle. I, I don't know. It's not, it's not what it calls for. So we've got that through the hole. Oh, no, no. What the heck? This is so weird. This assembly is strange. It's weird. There's like clips on here so that you don't need tools to put the wing on, but then you need a tool to put, put the, the strut, strut on. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, you're gonna have to give them a shot so they can see this totally strange clippy together doohickey thing that we're doing. Boy, it's like not wanting to line up. What am I doing wrong here, camera crew? I'm gonna try the other side first. Maybe just ramming it over here. It was uh, challenging to get that thing through. 
Do you hear our bystanders? Yeah, I do. They are begging for something. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. I got it. I got oh, that it. Was I got it. Okay. So now, while we're at it, guys, I am just going to go ahead and attach this because it's easier to do it now. Than yes. Later. It says to attach it in the outside hole. And should I just like preemptively just stick it into the inside hole? Probably. Because I just. We always seem to. We always change end up them. changing that on the elevator. But then people are going to be like, well, you didn't do it to spec. No, of course I didn't. That's not the way I do things. I do it the hardest way possible and yeah. make sure that I make it really difficult. Get in there. All right, guys. So are you putting it? I'm putting it in the inside hole. Okay. Which means I'm gonna get more deflection. The other day on one of my newbie reviews, I felt so bad, I totally set it backward. Oh man, this thing is hard to find. I'm just like rubbing it along there and I can't slide it in. And then the cats are obnoxiously distracting me. That's got it. I got it in the hole, guys. We're good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, being so obnoxious tonight. Oh, it slipped out. No. I think they're begging for food, are they? They have food, but they like it when I give them more <laughs> when they already have some. Like toddlers. Yes, they are. But they're hilarious. Okay, so it's on there now. Oh, okay. man, that was obnoxious. So now we are going to slide the other half in. Did you show them like the little teeth on these fingers that stick yeah, out right here? Yeah, you can see them, yeah. Okay. So I think what I'm doing wrong is you really kind of have to line that actively. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Line up both halves. Oh, yeah, buddy. They're in there. Mm-hmm. I see why they have a strut now. Okay, so definitely that small screw's gotta be it. Yeah. So the other day on an unboxing for another plane, we got this super long Chinese screwdriver, which we're gonna try today. And the reason I want a super long screwdriver is because I need to be able to get into this kind of like weird angle. And so I'm hoping that this goes smooth. Man, look how small those things are. That is ridiculous. Oh, look at goodness. that. That's so small. I think it goes without saying, but don't drop that. Yeah, no kidding. I'm sure the kitties won't eat it at all. Yep, that's it. That's the one. Okay, well. Wow, that is so dinky. I can't figure out, is this like a doing something or is this just a decoration because uh, i think it's doing something do you yeah because like even with the carbon fiber in there it's definitely feeling like it's necessary what i is? have to imagine that that may have been part of an afterthought it's a cool detail i don't understand why the directions are always different oh dang it what do you mean like the order no, like the directions have you putting this whole thing together, but it's like 80% done. What are you talking about? On the back. Oh, you're they're supposed to install the whole, like, yeah, to, like yeah. put the whole assembly together. Well, it's already mostly assembled. Yeah, I don't know. They do that sometimes too. Yeah. It's weird. I don't understand why either. Um, okay, so that looks pretty awesome. That's cool. Okay, so I don't know what this thing is, but I think it's probably to do with floats, right? Let's go, let's go to the next page. For those of you not familiar with the channel, we usually waffle through the build, and then when we're done with the build, we do the radio setup, and then when we're done with the radio setup, we fly in real life, but typically we put the flight at the beginning because the average Joe doesn't want to see me waffle through this. They just want to see me fly and crash. So... Well, there's your center of gravity. Hey, I don't even wonder where it is. Okay, the wings are, are ready to go, I guess. Yeah. These are most definitely for the floats, guys, okay? These are for the floats, and this has got to be that for the floats. That would make sense. So if you have a float set, then this will be used for that. Um, if I find out I'm wrong, I will share that detail at some point. So we're going to just slide these back in. Wait, that could be for the landing gear, huh? No, those bigger ones gotta be for the landing gear. You know what? Where does it say to put that tail? 
gear they on. They didn't even tell us to put it on today. No, it's already on in the picture. Yeah. Ugh, okay, all right. I was gonna say it's a little strange that they don't have us doing this. Um, okay, so that's where the spring is. The springs go between here and there. That's so cool, actually. I really like that. That's cool. Okay, so Are check this out. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. 100% sure. Because look, that is right there, camera crew, and this is right there. So what's going to happen is the spring must go between those two. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to go. Boy, don't you think something like that, that weird sort of thing, they would put in the manual? It hmm? might be helpful. Yeah, they never talked about it. Hmm. Dang it, they took a page out of the manual again. Where's the append, where's the, Keep going. wait, hold on, hold on. Nope. But that you're in the flight control. Yeah, yep, and then the disassembly for the motor. Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. So it looks like, that is weird. That is so weird. They show all that stuff. They never actually, they tell you how to take apart the motor. But they don't tell you to put the tail wheel on. <sighs> okay, You're killing me here. Killing me. I forgive you because it's cool. We have decals too. I Wait, hold those. on. I'm not sure if this is it though. Okay, okay. I agree that I'm not sure either. I think, that, no, I mean, I'm not sure if these screws are it because you see that other bag that has, okay. This bag has springs in it, okay. The springs and the screws alternatively hold into here or into here, I bet. That's gotta be what it is. Goodness. Okay, so number two screwdriver for this. Number two. Yes, that's what it is. Ooh, this is gonna be challenging. Give me a... Oh. Nah. No, I wanna just drop it and break it. Okay. Good plan. Will you push on it with your free hand? Push down on it. There you go. There you go. Whoa. How much? Uh, that feels like maybe it's a little bit too big for the hole also. Man, there's a lot what of that going around. What? That bag has more screws or just the yellow piece? Those ones are the flat screws. I don't think that's the ones that go there. So we're going to put this in. Ooh, if it goes. See, I'm just not 100% sure. It is going into plastic, so this would be the right type of screw for that. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh man, I hope I'm not telling all you people wrong. Ooh, ooh, eee. ooh. Yeah, that's probably what's needed because this thing is gonna be like getting beat to death. Um, I'm looking at the picture on the box. Yes, the picture on the box, guys. It's the directions they never tell you about. Yep. There's springs on there, camera crew. See? Picture on the box. If in doubt, look at the box. There you go. Springs, springs. Oh yeah, buddy. Whoa. Springs. Yeah, there's definitely springs. Okay. Hmm. That didn't sound good. Nope. It's all right. Still wasn't expensive. It's okay, I haven't made dinner yet. True. All right, now I'm still not 100% sold on these screws being the right screws, but we're still gonna, we're just gonna ram and jam it. I don't know what other screws we would use. But if, would it be these with the springs? No, those ones are gonna go into this. On the there. actual springs. Yeah, right here and there. So we're gonna figure it out. I mean, there's more than one way to skin it. Shh, I know, I don't want to freak them out. There's more than one way to skin this cat, and that does not feel like it's going all the way in. That means I might have stuck the wrong one in the wrong hole. I kind of think possibly I, so. I don't know. It's actually tightening up. I think what's going on is this is at an angle. So when I tighten this in, it's going straight in like this, and so it's bottoming out prematurely. Oh, man. This is why you watch the build series, guys. That way you can not screw your own plane up. You'll just watch me screw my plane up. Oh yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. It's maybe not right, but it's in there. That is gonna be so cool. 
that that thing goes way back there like that. It's those are the details that guys like me love, even though they don't have any instructions on how to put it together, which is kind of annoying. I can live with it though. Okay, see this? Four screws, two springs. All right. Okay. You can, you can use this for the stuff we sell. <laughs> How are we going to do this, camera crew? I don't I know. I see two very small screws, and then I see this, where this could go in here, maybe even. But I, you see how there's like that tall thing sticking out the top? I don't think that's the way it goes. I, I'm sort of inclined to just stick it in the hole like this and see if I can turn it like that. I mean, what would be wrong with that? Do we need the screws? Are the screws necessary? That's what I don't understand. I also don't understand. Horizon, come on. Killing me. There's probably supposed to be an addendum in this box. It seems like the normal thing to do. Yeah, this is kind of a big one. All right, let's see if we can get this done. I, oh man, that's like really stretchy, stretchy. See, like, I just don't see why that would be a problem. Do you? Or are you looking online? <laughs> During the video. Okay, look at that, guys. You see that? I don't understand why you would need to have screws involved. That's, that's why I'm wondering if the screws are for I don't know. I don't see why you would need screws. That thing is solid. Yeah. I mean, and it's really cool. It's really cool that it does it that way. Because here, let's just, let's just center it. Man, it's hard to pick off that thing is slick. We're gonna have to do a tape or something on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see this, this one linkage is turned, so I'm just gonna mechanically move that to the center. Now look at it back there for the camera. Oh yeah, that is so cool. That is really neat. I like yeah, that. why would you need a screw though? I, I don't know. Maybe if you wanted to, but it seems like it would almost be worse for the geometry because the way I bet what happened wait, is they. Wait, wait, see, you look online. <laughs> really? That must be an updated. Oh, we didn't get that piece of hardware. Look, we did not yes. get those things, did we? That's that thing, isn't oh, it? What? That's what I said. So what does this thing do? I don't know. This is like the so weirdest. So you got an old manual. I think that's what it is. Yep. That thing attaches to this thing. What? That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. What's wrong with the way I did it? <laughs> well, it <laughs> looks like it's perfect to me. I think what's going to go on is you're going to get out further. So you're going to have less output on the tail wheel. It's going to have more torque, but it's going to be less output. I don't, I don't know. Well, Okay guys, the camera crew saved the day here. This is basically what's going on. So we have to take and screw this thing in to that thing. Okay, this is gonna be weird. And then this holds onto the spring. No, this is a set screw, huh? That's a set screw right there. Yeah. So then the spring's gonna go through that, then we're gonna use a set screw on it too? It just Apparently. seems like a lot of complexity for not any change at all. That is very strange. All right, which way does this thing wrap? Does it wrap on the back side? Yes, it does. But then does it go on top or the bottom? It goes on the bottom? Okay. All right, guys. I'm sorry that I failed you by doing such an awesome job to simplify an already complicated machine, thus making it more reliable. I failed you, I know. So we're gonna go ahead and unhook this the awesome way that yours truly figured out how to do it. And we're gonna do it the more complicated and less reliable way that Verizon wants it. Do you have any pointers for me while I do this? No, I'm just, I think you did use the right screws. No, did you use those the ones? Those ones are the little, those ones are gonna be the little tinky dinky ones. <laughs> I'm serious. There's super dinky ones. Look at the super dinky ones I'm talking about are right here. It's the ones that... No, but to put the tail in, did you use the ones with the, like, the uh, washer? Yeah. Which still doesn't say anything about a washer. Well, these ones are probably smaller, actually. Well, I don't know. 
This is still on page four of an updated manual. If your manual has more pictures on page four, hey, that's where it show the comes people from. this because this is what needs to happen. Ah, dang it! I mean, my need my super long Chinese screwdriver. Where did I put that? Which thing? one? Right here. Right here. I think we've never done this before. Yeah, only hundreds of hundreds of times. <laughs> well, hundreds might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh -huh. Well, hundreds. Include all the little yeah, the hundreds. Ones. Okay, so watch this. I'm feeding it through the hole, and yes, that is the correct size. That's gotta be. Yeah. It's gotta be. That is nutty. That is nutty bar right there. Huh? It's actually a screw. Well, that's true. It is. It is actually a screw. So those are the teeny tiniest ones. Which are the same ones you use here, by the way, guys. Yeah. Again, you know, it used to be back in the day when you got a manual, the manual had a breakout of all the screws. Mm -hmm. And then you had to frustratingly go through and identify what they were so that you knew where to use them. I'm assuming at some point in the, you know, just the environment, the production environment, somebody said, you know what, it costs us like, you know, about $100 in labor to put together that part of the manual. So let's just cut that out and we can drop the price by a dollar and then be more competitive with the Chinese brand or whatever. Spend the hundred bucks. Okay. You see this? Now I'm assuming you, I just don't see how that's gonna be better. It's it's just gonna do the same exact thing except it's gonna have less output now. Right? I don't. Okay, so the drawing shows the spring. They don't even <laughs> they show, don't even putting show the, the spring, spring in. <laughs> okay, so it looks to me like what they're anticipating you do is you feed this thing through the set and then it can pivot at least. That would be a good factor. That would be valuable. Cause then this thing can pivot because there's a, a lock nut on the top, a nylock, and then there's this fixture, which will be, it's gonna provide some level of retention. Now we're not supposed to put a screw in there, are we? No, I don't think so. They don't show it. They didn't this show the is, rest of it. This is not cool. See, I, my inclination would be to go around the screw head, but I don't think that's right either. Well, because that set is not going to grab that very well. No. The set screw is going to barely hang on to it. See? Now that's going to be cool when you do floats. I don't really see. I wonder if it'd been better to just do it on the screw hole. We'll find out. These are the types of things that you can learn lessons from. And then people will put in comments for years to come. Ryan, it's right on page four, man. <laughs> Look at page four, dude. It's right there. Look. And I'll be like, page four didn't exist in my manual, dude. All right. We'll see if this works. If only you could type in that voice. Oh, yeah. I can type in that voice just fine. Well, it's tightened. I just don't know if it's any better than what we had before. It's definitely out further. It's, I mean, is that gonna make the output the same? I'm not, ugh, look what I did. What? I put the, the cast, it's backward. So I gotta redo this. Oh. See, I just happened to grab the wrong side. Whoops, there we go. There's also this thing here too, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure exactly what that does. I think it just provides for a little structural rigidity. It's a piece of carbon fiber there. Oh no, that's the steel. That's the steel. It's just the bent piece of steel hmm. that comes up here. That's what actually actuates the wheel. Oh man. Well, that I was hope, fun. I hope I don't have to mechanically trim that. That would not be fun. That is a sweet looking mechanism though. I just don't, I don't. I don't necessarily think it wouldn't have worked the first way we did it though. There's got there's gotta be a reason they did that. This is the way they do it on a carbon the carbon cubs in real life. So when you do grass landings and stuff, you can get whacked out of the way by rocks and stuff. That's pretty sweet. They do a lot of grass landings in real life on these things, so that's probably why they did that. I mean the real manufacturer, the whole scale plant. All right, so what's next? We've got everything is on except for the main wings. Yep. So now we have to just get the wings on and then the prop on. 
and these bolts, these ones are for sure the right ones yeah. for the wings. For so when you guys are looking through, these are the ones you want for the wings. They're kind of like that grade eight looking sort of golden color. Is there a fifth one of those somewhere? Why would there be five? Because we need one to put the prop on. What? Unless there's one in the, uh, unless there's one already there's in already there. There's already one on it. Oh, okay, good then. Yeah, that one's already on okay. and that's, they just hold the collet assembly together. Cool. Okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> I would recommend parking your flaps in the closed position for this step. Just that way when things turn on. All right, this is gonna be pretty easy to line up, I bet. Wait, uh, carbon fiber. Oh. Or does it matter? I mean, you, you could do it either way, but that's okay. a good point. I should probably really have it in there first, so I don't forget. Oh man, it's another tight squeeze. Man, I'm seeing yes. the all sorts of holes today. All right, so that's in there good. I'm still trying to figure out why they do a toolless install, but then they have two screws on each wing. That is a little bit goofy. Ooh. Oh, jeez. I hate having to squeeze them like that. Yeah. That's cool. It holds still with only one wing on. That's yeah. not something you get with all these planes, these models. Many times they'll tip over. So this is going to... Oh, that's a really good fit, though. That's like one of the best fits we've had in a long time. Yeah. I like the shape of this plane, guys. Look at this. It's got a really wide wingspan, but it's not very long. That means it's going to fit good. For a 1.5 meter, I'm not even screwed together yet, so i got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the ground, 1.5 meters on 6 foot tall. So, 6 foot 3 if it's life insurance guy watching. So, anyway. Um, all right, so now i got to screw this thing together. And for this step, I'm just going to flip it over and put it on the couch this I love the way the flaps line up beautiful wing tips love that detail love the ooh don't love that what was that that's gross ooh small stuff I don't know it's like black stuff mm, sweet it's Chinese black stuff it's my favorite it's probably it's like the opposite of what's what's that stuff that people like to send when they want to like off somebody at the <laughs> federal building powder. and stuff what is that white powder? Anthrax. Anthrax. It's the opposite of anthrax. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say anthrax on a video. Oh, dang it. That's right. It's going to be marked as, like, dangerous or something. Okay, these, they aren't going. They aren't, they aren't starting. I felt like we had good alignment. Mm-hmm. Guys, I love this yellow color. This is so cool. My grandpa built a few planes and he did a yellow color mm -hmm. for the planes and they always, they always like were super pretty. Yeah. And, um, okay, all right, that one feels like it's, that one's going. That gigantic screwdriver. Well, yeah, this is number two screw, so I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. Oh, there we go, there, there we go. Oh. Did you hear that? Yeah. That wasn't just in my head? No. Dang it. Sorry. Well, let's see if I broke the plastic in there. I mean, they're already retained in with a snap, so I'm not sure if this is just kind of like something to pre prevent it from popping out on accident. You don't want it to pop out prematurely. No, that's always bad. It is very bad. Uh, it's like kind of hard to tell if it's tight. I know on a couple of the planes, Horizon had been doing some clips, like on the PT, was it the PT-17? Did you hear that? Yes. I'm here. I'm in the room. Like, I don't understand why it's <laughs> snapping like that. I hope I've got the right screws in there. They feel solid. I love the way that tailwheel looks at. It was annoying getting it done, but that is so cool. This thing feels really light too. I'm excited. I mean, it's definitely FA not light, but it's, um, it feels light for its size, which I'm excited about. That is cool. Love the way it looks. Okay, 
So, time for the spinner. Ah, I gotta use the Chinese screwdriver. All right. Oh yeah, broke it free. So let's show the people at home how we do this. This is super easy. You're gonna basically take the spinner off. Once the spinner's off, then you'll be able to get to the collet. Yes, that screw is in there and is black yep. uh, anodized. Did I say that right? Black anodized. anodized. I think it's yeah. black anodized. Okay, so then this is going to set. That is weird. Look at those marks on the prop. That's bizarro. So anyway, this is called a collet, if you don't know that already. Pretty sure you know that if you're building this plane. Ooh, they threaded it on. That's weird. So that actually makes that contact. So when you tighten this down, it bites the prop shaft. So you slip this on all the way back. Then you more or less kind of spin the propeller, which is weird. Brace this. I mean, whatever gets the job done, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's definitely threading on there. What the heck? Then you jam that up with the nut. Now we need a crescent wrench. So I'm going to get a crescent wrench while the camera crew gives you a beautiful view of this airplane. It looks huge in the camera. That wing is way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. That is definitely on there good. Now the same thing, just reassemble it. I'm just gonna guide this in so I don't lose the screw as I do this. And that just feels like it's way out there. There we go. That threads a lot. Then brace it. Okay, here we go. We got it. Almost got it. So now the next time we film this, we're gonna have to film it when the the reel dies out. Because that would be sweet. That would be sweet. I don't think we can really control that. Plus, then that would be a violation of the FAA rules because we're supposed to yield to manned aircraft. It's like I'm flying for them. But still, crop dusters, you probably don't want to be flying around when they're down because they're going to be very close and you could actually run into them. Although, I'm pretty sure that thing is a durable plane mm -hmm. since it's hauling around literally thousands and thousands of pounds of fluid, which, if you didn't know, generally you don't put thousands and thousands of pounds of fluid in a small plane because it's really not that small of a plane. It's a very big and powerful plane, by the way. This guy's probably about eh, three times as big as I think he would be in real life. So, in case you're wondering, now, that being said, it is fully assembled, so that takes us to the next step of the game, which is going to be our radio setup. And man, that thing is beautiful. I've got to get a picture. Look at this thing. That is so gorgeous. Do you like it? Yeah, it's cool. It is gonna be a beautiful. Stick around for the radio setup. All right, guys, we got to mark the center of gravity. I forgot to do that. Uh, it's 65 millimeters in from the leading edge. This is a nice straight wing, so it's super easy to tell where that is. That's great. So because of the curvature of the wing, I have found it difficult to measure back 65 millimeters and get a consistent measurement because of the change in the shape of the wing. So what I have learned works really nice is to basically take a pair of scissors and a piece of paper and I'll show you exactly the process. It's nothing new. If you've watched my channel for a little bit, you've probably seen me do this before. Uh, starting from, this is the world's worst ruler. It, is. it starts here instead of at the end and having square ends. But of course, it'd probably be like a slash fest if you did that. It'd be like the shiv from hell. Um, okay, so we're just going to do this. We're going to line that up there and we need to go 65 millimeters in. So, whoops. So 65 millimeters is right here. So 6.5 centimeters and then plus or minus five, plus or minus five. So, okay. So for those of you who don't know what plus or minus means, that means 60 to 70 millimeters. Okay. They're recommending 65. So now I'm going to take and cut this piece of paper out with my two little lines or my dots in this case. And uh, then it takes the guesswork out. You take this piece of paper with your dots 
and I'm actually just gonna kind of make a dot in the middle. I'm gonna make a dot at the end. I'm gonna make a dot at the other end. And I'm actually gonna mark the extremities. This is just gonna touch the leading edge of the wing where I want it to work. I'll come back and it looks like it's really close to that panel line. So that's kind of convenient. Okay, so we'll just, uh, I'm just gonna poke a hole, poke a little hole and then poke a little hole. Okay, so you see those three little bumps? There's extremity number one, there's extremity number two, and then the middle I'm gonna leave unmarked and just a small little depression. Oops, sorry cat. The kittens were whacking my feet as I did that, which made it very difficult to do this. Okay, so that was a coronal lit there. You're welcome, WHO. Right here, here we go, here we go, ready to go. Ready to go. One, two, and trace. Then we're gonna go big hole, big hole, little hole. So I can feel it, and that will make it easy for us to identify the center of gravity when we get to that point. So normally that would kind of fall into the build slash radio setup. Um, in this case, it's build. So there you have it. Also, we neglected to notice that there was an, an addendum. Evidently, they talked wrong about where the holes are and all this stuff, so we're just going to go ahead and file that away in the garbage can. It wasn't the addendum we needed. No, it was the one we didn't need. <laughs> so I don't care where the holes are. Um, as long as they're in the same hole, we can adjust that after we fly it for the first time. So binding procedure is a little bit different on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the model, and then we will come back and bind it as we would typically do. So the first step for us here is to have a comfortable seat while the camera crew stands and watches. Thanks. You're welcome. It's all for you, camera crew. Yeah, right. So we have our radio set up here. So we're going to click, scroll all the way to the bottom, system setup. Shuts off the RF. Scroll to the bottom. Whoops. Model select. Add a new model, create, model type, verify it's an acro, which is an airplane. So then we want to go back one page. This is the binding procedure. We'll go back one page, right there. Computerized transmitter setup. That's what you guys want. Can you go to the other side and see if it works? Um, okay. Tip, if you choose to use flap channel six to operate both the flap and the safe select, there is an extra step required during setup. The values need to be temporarily set to plus or minus 100 and the switch speed set to zero in the flap system menu. Complete the safe select switch assignment process before these settings or, and so basically what they're saying is if you have a two second delay or a two second sweep, then it's gonna, you're gonna have to sweep and then back and it's just gonna ignore the input. Okay, so you have to do it before you set that up. Okay, so good to know. I'm not gonna be designating channel six as my safe select. I'll be doing something higher so that we can uh, go ahead and not have to share a channel. So obviously I don't wanna have to use flaps with safe or no flaps with safe, okay? So dual rates, they're suggesting um, do not lower do not lower rate values below 50%. If less control deflection is desired, manually adjust the position. That's true for any plane, by the way, guys. Um, simple stuff. So we're setting up a DXA team, which is here. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this little section here. Doesn't look like there's a bunch of weird choices on this, like that Knight Timber X was mm -hmm. like super complicated. Um, so one aileron, one flap. Um, model type is airplane. Set channel assign, default switch assignment with a new model seven. Okay, flaps is on channel six. Do they want us to put flaps here? Forget that. Um, that's gonna be, I'm gonna have flaps here like I always do. I don't know when they decided this was a better place, probably because they're pincer grippers. I, I have a hard time getting a D. Okay, 
So flaps up, flaps down. Why did they switch their method for marking this? That's goofy. Oh no, look, set travel, flaps 100, minus 100. That is so weird. I don't even understand why they're talking about that because then they talk about the, the flap set up here. So what is that? Hmm. Anyway, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, so that being said, uh, model type is definitely aircraft. Data will be reset, yes, okay. Model name, this is where you type in your name. So what is this thing called? This is called the Air Tractor 1.5. So we are going to scroll. Every time you press clear, it changes what you're scrolling through. Air Tractor. So we'll pause it and come right back when we're done with this. So we have the Air Tractor 1.5 meter. Um, also, real quick note, guys, put the sizes, just get in the habit. It's gonna be helpful because you know there'll be some like UMX Air Tractor at some point. And you know, I can't explain how many timbers I've had. There's a lot of them. A lot. So if you don't put the name, then you're gonna, if you don't put the size with the name, you're gonna have a hard time finding them. Like my friend Esteban, the cameo. He doesn't ever bother to put the name in there. And so it takes us about 20 minutes to figure out what models to put it. Uh, okay, so channel sign. I don't think we need to do anything on channel sign. Um, ooh, the aircraft. Ooh, you know what though? You know what we forgot? Aircraft type. There we go. Here we go. We got to set up. And then we'll do this. We're going to change that picture from that goofy, ugly acro. That's probably the closest one we're going to get. I wonder. Well, that one's pretty close too. If I updated the firmware, I bet it would have a picture of it. That would be more. <laughs> accurate <laughs> but <laughs> still not doing that don't want to do that right now so we'll do this okay good enough mm, okay so now we're ready to come out of the regular metal uh regular menu and we're going to go straight into the function list that's where you click in regular mode and dual rates and expo i always forget dual rates and expo we're not going to forget that today Wow, look at this. All transmitter. Okay, start all transmitter programming with a blank arm. Okay, let's do that. So they want 70% for the low rates. Throttle cut to minus 100. Ooh, look, they have 15 and 5. Okay, so we'll try that. So basically on ailerons, I always set everything to switch F. So it looks like on the regular rate, Aileron's 15 and low rate's 5, so, so that doesn't fit my criteria normally. So we'll do 5, then we'll do 10, and then we'll do, no, we'll do 20, and then we'll do, I don't want 70, that's like crazy low, so we'll do 90. So as you can see on the lowest setting, it's five, then it's 10, then it's 20, okay? And we drop back the rates to 90. And we're gonna do the same thing. So it says ailerons. It looks like the ailerons are probably gonna be a little bit touchy because they're so huge. So this is, this is gonna be just the same. I'm not gonna mess around. I'm just gonna do the same. I'll start with five, then I'll do, whoops. I gotta assign it to switch out first. So we'll do five. Then we'll do 10, then we'll just do 20 with 90% rates, okay. Then we'll switch to rudder, we'll assign it to F as well. We'll set that to five all the time, then we'll set it to 10, then we'll set it to 20, and we'll set this down to 90. And then I'm gonna scroll back to ailerons. I'm actually gonna kick up my middle setting to 15 because that's what they want that a little bit higher for some reason. And then I'll set this to 25. And in my low setting, I'll go up to seven. Okay, so that's gonna get us some expo uh, throttle cut. We're gonna turn that on. We're gonna set it to switch at H. I'm gonna set this to minus 100. We're going to test if it's on. You can tell by the throttle not moving that it's on. And when it's off, you can see it moving. Okay, so that's working. Then we're going to go to um, timer first. We're going to set that to four minutes with a one out or one time active. 
with tone and vibrate. So as soon as you move the stick over 25%, it's gonna start counting down from four to zero, and then it's gonna buzz, and then every minute thereafter, it's gonna buzz. Uh, it's gonna beep, but not vibrate. So it just beeps and vibrates, tones and vibrates at the alarm. Now we need to set up flap system. I'm gonna set it to switch B. I don't know why it's a throttle stick, but it's kind of goofy. This is where it tells you how to set that up. So it's minus 100. So once you get to minus 100, we have no elevator correction on that setting, of course. Then we're at zero with an elevator correction of 6%. And then we're gonna do 100. And an elevator correction of 10. And we want the speed set to two. Okay, very good. So throw cuts on, everything should be set. So we're done with the radio setup. Now we just have to, oh, that's the plug and play. We just have to do the binding procedure. Now you can use a bind plug, but they have a button on the new AR637. Uh, so as a result, we'll show you that procedure right now in the book. This is on page nine, unless you have like a different one that has different pages. Uh, using bind button, safe select disabled. I want to use safe select enabled, okay? This is a little bit tricky because if you're used to using the bind plug, then it does get a little bit confusing. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your throttle down. In my case, I'm gonna have throttle cut on. All your settings that you want normal are going to be in their correct position so that the fail safe gets set. Um, you're going to basically plug in the model. You're going to press the button. You're going to have your transmitter off at this point when you're doing all that. And then once that orange flashing LED starts, then you're going to turn this on while holding this while still holding, holding that. that. Yes. Okay. So this it's a little bit confusing. It's kind of hard to explain it in a better way that I can come up with. We're going to try with the 4S. How are we going to do the 4S first? I don't know. Not I'm not sure. Right now. I know we're not going to fly right now because <laughs> it's dark, but I think I just want to see what the 4S fit, how, mm, how it fits. So we'll go ahead and stick that in there for the sake of the build series. If the 4S fits good, then the 3S should be no problem at all. Yeah, true. it's kind of hard to get this canopy off, guys, because everything is slick. The mold release, and it's just like there's no good place to grab on. It does release really nicely. Big canopy, by the way. You put a gigantic battery. Yeah. In. It's almost like they were planning on somebody putting some sort of a liquid vessel in there. I don't know who would do that. Crazy. They did put the crappy straps in here, though. That sucks. See these? These are the junky ones, the ones that rip every single time that they put them in the planes. I wish they would just eliminate these from their 4K. Just go straight to the higher quality ones. I'm gonna start, this is a smaller pack though. So the 6S packs are the ones that um, get the better straps typically. And you can upgrade the straps for a couple of bucks. So it's probably not a big deal. I just, it just annoys me because I feel like it's such a minor detail. Like why don't they just put in the better one? Um, also, this is going to be annoying to me until the day I die, so I'm just going to promise not to chop my fingers off. <laughs> and uh, obviously, I still have the prop on. If you guys are doing this and you're novice, do not install the prop until you're comfortable. My camera crew knows what to do. She knows how to stay out of the way. Um, all these wires that are sticking up are a little bit obnoxious. I don't want to have that there when I'm flying, so I'm actually going to go through the trouble of tucking those down now. Just make sure they're kind of out of the way. I would do zip ties if I thought I needed it, but it's actually, they're not, they're not too bad at all. It's really easy to get this. I am nervous about that thing being at an angle. I'm not really sure if that's gonna be an issue, but we'll find out. So transmitter is off. Throttle stick is down, throttle cut is on, okay? Camera crew is gonna be in a safe spot. She's actually gonna go over here so she can see possibly all of it at the same time. You want the plane in a flat and level attitude as though it were on the ground with the landing gear touching, okay? That's ideal, okay? Just to be clear, IC3 is compatible with an EC3. So this is a smart pack. It has the extra pin 
it will pass right between those two connectors, okay? So we're gonna plug in the battery while pressing and holding. No, plug in the battery, then, then press, press and hold. Plug in the battery, oh. then press and hold this little button, guys. See it right here? This little button, okay? Until it flashes orange. Flashing orange, now keep holding it, press and hold the bind, and then turn on your transmitter. And I'm sorry you can't see all of it at once. Binding, DSMX, 22 milliseconds telemetry. Now you can let go of both, correct? Yep. Listen for the dance twice. Looks like we need to flip, we need to flip the flaps, flaps which is goofy. I don't remember seeing that. Did you remember seeing that? No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, so let's show people how to do that real quick because it's super easy. Hey, did it do the dance twice? I don't know, let's try it. Okay, as is par for the course, I'm gonna unplug the battery for safety reasons, let everything reboot. I'm gonna shut off the transmitter. Now we're not doing the binding procedure. I'm gonna turn on the radio first, throttle cut is on, stick is down. Okay, then I'm gonna plug in the connector. Twice. Yep. Okay. So that means safe is active, okay? Not on, but it's activated, activated. within the binding process. Yes. So drop this in here. Now let's look at this, guys. Um, First of all, elevator's going up and down, correct? Ailerons are going correct. Rudder is going correct. Throttle cut is on, we're just gonna test it. It's working, throttle cut is off. Whoa, that's wow. got a lot of power. Four yeah. trappers. So throttle cut is on and it is tested again. We're good, timer's cleared. So everything's working except for whatever reason the flaps are backward. Now let's revisit this manual for a second because maybe I missed it. I don't like to say that it's wrong before I verify I didn't miss something. Okay, they didn't say set travel flaps up 100 flaps down. My, I don't understand. I think what they mean is reverse flaps. So servo setup travel. Yeah, that's the goofiest way of saying that I've ever seen in my life. So now look. So I just reversed my flaps. I guess they must not have been aware. So, I don't know. This is my neutral flying mode, so that's takeoff flaps, landing flaps. I love the flaps, it looks awesome. Okay, so now, now that we have that resolved, now we have to do an assignment for safe select. Okay, so in order to assign safe select, Horizon has been plagued with getting this instruction wrong in the manual. I don't know why, it seems like it'd be pretty straightforward stuff. Um, Oh, if you're into dual rates and control throws, it's on page 10. Okay, I don't do that stuff. So this is an example. Okay, so you want the sticks down and in, okay? So down and in for your assignment. The reason I say they've been plagued is because I've gotten addendums like what, three or four times on it. Yeah. So in this case, it's down and in, and then we have to assign it by flipping the switch. Now, the first thing you have to do is go to your monitor mode, which is just like on mine, you just scroll over once. And then you can see if something changes. So gear is not doing anything on this plane. So I'm okay with having safe activated on the gear channel. Now, if I had landing gear, retractable landing gear, I would want to assign it somewhere else like over on D. And that's the hardest one for me to get to. So you have to kind of think that through. Set your transmitter up the same way every time. Put the same stuff on the same switches if you can possibly do it. If you get like a tank drop or some weird thing, put it on a weird obscure switch. Cause you're not gonna have that on a normal plane. And you don't want to be accidentally hitting it thinking you're going to deploy the flaps. Okay, just get in the habit of doing it. Horizon isn't even very good about that. They'll switch around the, the switches. Don't do that. Do the same ones. Okay, my two cents. Throttle cuts on. Everything's tested. So I'm going to switch this five times when I do this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I just did it 20 times. I never saw the dance. So that makes me a little bit weary as to whether or not it was working. I think what happened is after the 10th time it took. Okay? Yeah. You can't tell, right? Okay, throttle cut is off. I'm gonna give it some throttle so AS3X is active. That thing is really powerful. Yeah. Throttle cut is back on. 
AS3X is active. It's not noisy at all. That's kind of cool. No, it's not. You'll notice it's safe. It's also active. Okay? Throttle pin has been tested. Safe is on. Safe is on because it's trying to find the quickest route to home or to level. Now safe is still on. Still on. So something didn't work. So now we figure out why. All right. Let's try flaps. Just to make sure, because they were talking about channel six. Mm. Okay. Still on. Still, still on. on. Okay. So we did not get the assignment. I don't know why. Maybe because we flipped the switch 20 half switches. Okay. Flaps are out. Sticks are down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. It changed, but it didn't dance, so I don't think it's right. There's definitely a change now. See the change? That mm -hmm. typically happens with safe. When you deploy safe, it's going to attempt to level the plane. If you have a tricycle, it's going to be at a different angle. It's going to be at a different attitude. It's going to be pointed uphill, so it's going to be attempting to level it. That's why you see that. I believe we're out of safe. Nope, we're in safe. Now we're out of safe. Yep. Okay, so we got it the second time. So just flip your switch like 100 times and you'll be good. So obviously we're not in safe. Obviously we're in safe. Now show the people at home. My switch, this is where I want safe to not be active. So I'm gonna show you how to resolve that conflict if you have it. Uh, for me, I put my switches in the same exact condition all the time. So when I get ready to fly, before I fly any plane, I know what switches should be in what condition with the exception of retractable landing gear, depending on how I transport the plane, okay? So, in this case, you can see that there's a change in state when I move the switch. So all we have to do is just change the servo control by reversing it. Now it's done. See how it's changing it? Now we're gonna verify. Throttle cuts on. Safe should be off right now, and it is, but I'm gonna verify it. It is off, okay? So since safe is off, that will turn off. One thing I noticed about this plane immediately, when I pick it up, it's solid. I don't have any crushing on that inside wing root. I hate that when I get a plane that crushes on the inside. Some of my favorite planes do it, by the way, Carbon Z Cup. It's a heavy enough plane that it will crush because you have this huge weight. This thing is solid, it's not crushing at all. And it feels stout, it's easy to pick up. I know those are stupid little details, but it does actually make a difference. The flight experience is different if it's easy to handle a plane when you're taking it out to the flying field. The other thing is, if you decide to take one wing off of this, you'll be able to fit it in a pretty tight spot. If you take off both wings, that tail is still pretty huge. That's as big as some planes. Like, look at it compared to the turbo timber. It's almost as wide as the turbo timber, okay? So, just keep that in mind. You'll be able to take this off with two screws, and if you take off both sides, you can do that with four screws. But honestly, you'll be surprised how easy you can get it in with just one wing taken off. And to be honest, if you take off this canopy, you could probably stick it between your driver's seat or between your rear seats, just in the middle vertical. I think it'll work. So we're gonna check the CV real quick. It's been a while since I had to transport planes, which is a very good problem to have. Okay, timer's cleared. We're gonna leave this thing powered up. Since it's already on, I want you guys to be able to enjoy the beautiful lights. I don't know if you guys noticed, I certainly did. Nose lights, that's cool. They are extremely Those bright and blinding. We have the strobes and the nav lights, awesome. No tail light, that would be nice. Okay, so CG is already marked. And I'm just gonna, this is with 3200 4S and we will mark it. Okay, so just looking so I can see where the marks are. I'm at the back barking. Ooh, wow. That's like probably about right. That's on the back hole though. I want to be on the center hole. Yeah, definitely would need to come forward a little bit. I don't want to start out with a tail heavy on, on a plane. I mean, I could probably fly it, but I don't want to fly it tail heavy. Okay, so come on up here, camera crew. So currently we're tail heavy, just very slightly. So I'm gonna just slide that forward, okay? About a, well, let's call it a half an inch. We will mark this when we're done, once we've established where we wanna be. 
Okay, so I want to be center of gravity. I want to be neutral in the middle position. Is what I want to be. Yeah, I'm having to guide it, so it still needs to come forward a little bit. This is 4S. This makes me think it might handle a, a big battery. We got it way up there. Okay. Did the manual speak to where to start with the battery? I think it might have mentioned something about it, and I just kind of glossed over it. To be honest, guys, center of gravity is it's a factor, but it is somewhat subjective. You get a pretty big range on these planes. That is spot on. Just a little bit of nose down attitude in the very center hole. Okay. I love that position. So now I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna show you what I do. You don't have to do this. This is again very highly subjective step. Um, I like to mark for the batteries that I know I'm gonna use. And I don't know if this is gonna work. I might have to use an ultra fine sharpie so that it Marks better. All right, camera crew. What are you doing? What are you reading? What's I was looking to see if it said anything about battery. I didn't see anything. No, nah, let's just do this. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a nice little arrow and I'm going to write what it is 3200. Okay, and then I'm going to say an arrow and I'll say wires. Okay. Because sometimes in the planes, your wires are going to go other ways. But in this plane, it's pretty obvious what direction the wires are going to go. Okay? So that being said, what is this? What is this tray? It's glued in, right? It's weird. It looks like the slide-in tray from the P51. Like on the 1.2 meter P51. Are you going to mark for us, too? Yes. That's a very good point, camera crew. So now... What we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and jump right in and we'll just uh, put in the 3S right now and see how it fits. Oh, okay. Oh, man. That connector is kind of hard to unplug. So that was 4S 3200 30C Smart Pack. So we're going to have that thing charged and ready. Now we're going to put in the 3S 3200 30C. This one's gonna have to be way up there, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would think so. Oh man, there's huge amounts of room up there. Wow. That's awesome. Um, okay, well, you know, I might stand it up on end on this one, maybe. Whoa, there's two trays in there, what the heck? Look at this, there's two trays in there. See, there's one there, and then there's one there. So there's technically two of them, that's weird. I haven't ever seen Ryzen do that. I mean, let's be honest, guys. I'm probably going to fly this on 4S. But who knows? Some of these planes do so much better light. Okay, so I went. Yeah, it's like all the way up in there. I bet it's going to have to be, too. Oh, no. My tray just broke free. What the heck? Luckily, it's got like six glue points, so I think we're okay. That silicone glue, that weird... Horizon silicone glue that they use. Okay, I got this thing all the way up front. Throttle cuts on. Yes, it is. Oh. Let's see how this goes. Man, you could put a gigantic battery in this thing. Yeah. All right, guys. If you're still watching, you can roll the star because this has been a long day. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's good. Right in the middle. Yeah. I'll show you guys where it went. That slipped. Did it? It slipped. Yeah, um, I didn't I didn't tighten the straps hard enough. And I didn't put any velcro on these. It was right here though. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna verify it. And you you're only gonna have just like one little strap holding it, but it doesn't have that far to move forward. And the percentage of of weight that this battery makes up of the whole overall plane weight is pretty limited. Okay, let's see how this does. Man, that's just gonna slip, isn't it? Yep. It's gonna slip. We're gonna have to apply some Velcro to it if we want it to hold steady. Mm -hmm. Let's show the people what happened to my battery tray. This is kind of annoying. It'll probably happen to you guys too. Some of this stuff is just bound to happen. Look at this, see it lifted? 
See that? Oh, jeez. That's annoying. Okay, so we're gonna glue that. I don't know, maybe we'll use hot glue. Let's pause it, we'll get some hot glue. Okay guys, so just one last tip. It's not really rocket science here, but we just have a hot glue gun. Now, this is, this is siliconed in. Um, I've had battery trays break free on me before. A lot of times what happens, there's a lot of mold release on this stuff. And so sometimes they'll break free like that. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. It sucks, but I normally don't use hot glue on planes because it's heavier, but it really works nice for this application. Just keep in mind that hot glue is insulated by the foam, so it will stay hot for a little bit, okay? So don't let this thing get to scalding like three hours worth of warm up um, because you'll be disappointed with the way it responds. It's gonna melt more foam. Um, the reason I'm doing this as opposed to CA is because CA will be way too brittle, way too brittle. And we are so far forward with the batteries, I actually don't have a big problem with adding a little teeny bit of weight worth of glue. So if you're doing this on a small plane, you're going to regret it. It's gonna make it heavier. Um, so I'm just gonna glue this one spot and then I'm gonna go up here and you can see kind of up here, there's another, there's another joint right there. So I'm just gonna stick in the hole there. Notwithstanding the fact that I'll probably melt it a little bit, that's okay. I don't even care right now because that's gonna still do what I need it to do. Once this sets up, you can just feel it with your finger. I'm gonna do the other side just as a good measure. And I'm actually going between both of them. Hon, can you give them a shot of this actually? So they can see what I'm talking about. What, I think you're gonna do there. <laughs> it's hard to see. See what I'm talking about guys? I'm just kind of joining between those two pieces. And you see this stuff's cooled. So it's just gonna help hold everything together. And just for good measure, I'm just like thinking we can use the weight so it's not gonna hurt anything. We're gonna add like, I don't know, probably three or four grams worth of weight. And then just a little Corona lick. And then you're good to go guys. Okay, so that, that will, believe it or not, so that will that will hold this thing in okay i'm not going to temp fade it and we'll still set up for a few more minutes but now the 3s we're going to go ahead and try to get this one in here and get you guys the center of gravity mark yeah way more solid now i'm satisfied with that for now when we get ready to fly we can we can go in more depth so we have the radio on. Make sure you seat these connectors all the way, guys. These EC, EC3 and EC5 compared to the IC3 and IC5, there are times that that pin will catch one of these sides. So you have to make sure you seat them all the way, okay? So we're gonna put the canopy on because obviously that's a big piece of weight, so we'll make sure it's on. And since we have a hot glue here, we could actually put them on instead of recesses. That's pretty good. Maybe just, just ever so slightly forward of where it is. So I'm gonna be careful about the way I flip it. Okay, release the canopy. And you can see where we are. I wanna be just a hair forward of that. So we're gonna mark right here with an arrow. Okay. Can they even see from where you are there? Okay. And then I'm gonna just say, there's a little arrow that's gonna denote where the wires go. And this one's also 3200, but it's 3S, okay? And if you guys are gonna use a 2200 milliamp, you may need to do some modifications to the CG, which would not be very desirable in my opinion. You're gonna to have to have that thing so far mm -hmm. up that you're not gonna necessarily be able to prevent it from touching the back side of the motor. And uh, when that happens, that's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, you didn't hear it from me, but it's true. There's the shaft that comes out of the motor and if that shaft rubs on the battery, it's not a good idea. All right, guys, there you have it. I'm just gonna give you one more beautiful shot of this thing. 
this part. The video has come to a close. It's been awesome. We love sharing this experience with you. This plane, I hope it flew as good as it looks like it's gonna fly. I'm really excited for this one. It looks good. It feels solid. It's the type of plane that I just love. These general aviation planes just get me all excited. And I think you're probably gonna wanna check the link and buy one for yourself. But even if you don't, come back for more. There is more coming.